Hi, and welcome to the second of my PowerShell tutorial series. This is going to be more of an intermediate level uh, tutorial series. If you want to see my beginner tutorial series, I'll be putting a link to that playlist in the description. That will go over all the basics that you really need for these videos. Um, in these videos, we'll be going over creating custom functions, creating modules, PowerShell remoting, definitely some more in-depth topics, which having the previous knowledge of the beginner videos is useful, maybe not completely necessary, um, but definitely going to be useful going through these videos. Uh, in these videos, we're going to be doing some uh, light examples of these topics. Uh, in order to use them in bigger tutorials that I'll be doing later on where I won't be explaining the things as in depth. In this video, we'll be looking at custom functions first. So we'll be creating our own function uh, to later put on or put in a module in the next tutorial video. Um, but right now we're just going to be creating a function and showing you all the different things that you can do in a function like setting parameters, making parameters mandatory, accepting input from the pipeline and making sure that the values from the pipeline are being taken in properly. So the first things first, if we want to use a function, uh, we've got to create a function. Now you might be wondering why do I need to use functions? Uh, functions are very useful in the fact of if you have four or five lines of code maybe. Usually it's more like you can have maybe 20, 30 lines of code that you know you'll have to execute multiple times uh, in your script. You're better off to write a function once and then reference that function and pass in values as needed um, to do the proper computation or proper action on the file or object that you need. Um, so when we first declare a function here, we just use the keyword function, and then we go ahead and we create our function name. So I'm going to go ahead and call it create configuration. You can name it anything you want. I like to stay uh, to the standard of PowerShell, use a verb noun, it's kind of like a commandlet, uh, but these are not commandlets. Commandlets are coded in languages usually like C Sharp. Um, but these are just going to be coded using um, what we have available to us within PowerShell. So we're going to go ahead and create that. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll just put an open and close curly brackets. So very similar to your for loop, um, your for each functions. So inside here, we're just going to do a very simple example. At first, we are just going to simply put creating configuration file dot 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 and then we will see here if I go to do this PowerShell can actually auto complete already my function so if we run this here we get creating configuration file now these types of functions probably aren't very useful we aren't taking any parameters uh, so really you can't really do a whole lot it's really going to just be if you're constantly maybe outputting something to the screen and you just don't want to copy paste that one line, create a function and you can do that for sure. Um, but what we like to do is definitely add some parameters to this. So what we can go ahead and do is we're just going to go indent and we're going to put some square brackets here. We're going to put commandlet binding and then param. So what this does, it basically kind of maps out that we are having parameters in this function. So if we open up the parentheses inside here, and we could start putting in parameters. To declare a parameter, very similar to declaring um, that you're accepting parameters, we're going to use the square brackets here. And we're going to put parameter. And then we are going to put I like to put the type that we're expecting. So we're going to be expecting a string here. And then you're going to give it a variable name. So we're just going to accept a parameter called name. And then we are going to be creating configuration file with the name and name. So if we go ahead and we run this, 
we see that it runs, doesn't put a name, but if we do, we could actually put a name here. So if we do a config server one here, we can see that we get creating configuration file with the name config server one. So that's exactly where we're passing in our parameter and we are using that value. Now, what we might want to do since this function is creating a configuration file, most configuration files really do need a name. Um, so we can make parameters mandatory by simply adding the mandatory keyword in the brackets here, or parentheses, I should say. And now if we remove this and we execute this code, we're gonna see that I get prompted for a name. So if I just put a name here, let's do config server five, and we see that we get config server five here. Now, what we could actually do as well, if we know that it's mandatory, but we have a default value that we want to assign to it, we could also assign a default value um, to this variable here. So let's go ahead and let's take that mandatory away here. Or actually, let's keep the mandatory. And I will create a new parameter, so mandatory. To add a second parameter, all we need to do is add a simple comma after the first parameter. And then we start a second parameter. So here, I'm not going to put it as mandatory because we're going to be providing a default value. And we're going to be putting this as a string as well. And we're going to put this as a version. And we are going to put the default value of the version to 1. So now if we run this here, we still get prompted for the name. So if I do config server 1. And I just forgot to add the version here. Let's go ahead and let's run that. So all we got to do is supply the name. So as we see here, creating configuration file with the name config server at version one. If we do a name here, and we put test, we can see that again, it does creating configuration file with the name test at version one. But we could also supply a version number of four and run this. And we do get the creating configuration file with the name test at version four. Now, what if we wanted to say, we will only want version one and version two for now. We don't want version three. We don't want version four. We don't want any versions other than one and two. We could actually add some validation on these parameters. So all we would need to do to add a validation there is right underneath or above the parameter that we want to validate. We just need to add some square brackets and then the words validate set. And then with validate set here, we just have to add a open and close parentheses and then put the set that we want to accept. So we're going to put one and two. And I believe that actually. It might have to be put right above. Yes, so it, do, it does need to be put right above the, the parameter name and the default value here. So if we go ahead and we run these lines of code, we're going to see that we do get an error. And the error says, create configuration, cannot validate the argument on parameter version. The argument 4 does not belong to the set 1, 2, specified by the validate set attribute. Supply so an argument that is in the set and then to try the command again. So basically what it's saying is we passed in four. It's saying that, you know, it could only be one or two. Please specify one or two and then try it again. So let's go ahead and let's put two in here. And we see that that works. 
So that's all nice and dandy. Now let's say if we wanted to pass in some values, let's say we had all the names of our configuration files in an array, and we wanted to pass those in via a pipeline. What we could do here on the parameter name, since that's the value that we want to be able to pass in by pipeline, all we need to do is add a comma after the mandatory and put value from pipeline. And then let's go ahead and let's just create our, our names array here. So we could test one, test two, and let's do one last one here just to have three of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the name because we're going to want to pass that in through the pipeline here and let's do names and let's pipe that to create configuration. So in theory, we should see test one, test two, and test three with creating configuration file with the name of test one, test two, test three at version two, since we are still specifying that it's gonna be at version two. But when we run this actually, we are going to see that we only get creating configuration file with the name of test three at version two. Now this is because we're actually missing something important from this function here. And that's actually gonna be the process block, but there's actually a begin block and a end block that is also part of a function. So let's go ahead and let's add that in this function here. We're gonna add the process block first, and then we're gonna add the other two types of blocks, just so you guys can see all the different block types here in functions. So once we have our process here, let's go ahead and let's run this again. And now we see all the three different tests. Now, I did mention that there was two other blocks of code that we could add here, which is gonna be the begin and the end block. Now, if we do the begin, if I can spell it correctly here, so let's do begin. And then we're gonna do an end block. Now, just for sake of showing um, what this is, if we actually just go ahead and do that, oops, actually, give me one second. If we go ahead and do this and then close that, and then close that again, we are gonna see how many times this begin block runs, this process block runs, and this end block will run. So let's go ahead and let's run that here. So here we have creating configuration file with the name blank, creating configuration file with the name test one, test two, test three, and then creating configuration file with the name blank. So when the values are coming in from the pipeline, it's really only going to be executed with the process block. The begin block is really used to set up your variables. So this might be like any kind of like counter variables that you might want to use in that code block or setting up some database connections or anything like that. And then the end block is going to be where you're going to want to like display your total if you're keeping track of a score. Um, or keeping track of like an algorithm and there's like an end result, um, or you're closing off some database connections that you no longer want open. That's what you're gonna do with the begin and end block. And then the process block is where the meat and potatoes of your code is really going to be. So the begin is really just kind of setting up everything. Process is the big chunk of the code that you're really gonna be writing. And then the end block is really just the cleanup and maybe a little end display uh, to show the end results. And that's really it for functions. Um, that's how you create a function. And then what you would do with these functions is you would create, I don't wanna use a module of them because we're gonna be creating a module in the next video, but you're gonna be creating a bunch of these functions and putting them in a module. And then you're gonna have a library to of functions that you're gonna be able to execute after loading in that module. And these are gonna be very useful for bigger projects because you just don't wanna write all these functions 
in one script file and then have that script file also be the script that references those functions. What you're really going to want to do, kind of like other languages, is you're going to want to create all your functions in a module file, import that module, and then use that module in that script to do anything that you want. What you could do is you can create modules, especially if you're running um, your own business or if you're working for a company. Maybe you'll want to create multiple modules for different things, like if you're creating VMware or Hyper-V machines. Uh, maybe have a module just for those, um, and then maybe have a module for your Active Directory automation. And we're going to be going over some examples of some good modules to create in the next video, uh, but also later on in some of my tutorials that I'll be posting in my channel, we'll be creating modules together for those types of projects. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on my next video.